Mars, that wonderful place that's unlike any wonderful place we know. It doesn't have oxygen, it's unbearably hot, and last of all, it's really, really, really red. It's so red that we call it the Red Planet, but despite all of its shortcomings, we've collectively had the fever dream of reaching Mars someday. We've written movies about it, we've sung songs about it, and there are even comics about superheroes from the planet. The problem then arises, how do we plan on getting there. Right now, we use regular chemical propellant, but if we're going to transport people to the lonesome red planet and hope to colonize it one day, not only are we going to require a bigger spacecraft than we currently have, we are also going to require a lot more fuel. Or not. Welcome to today's episode of Super Freaky Science, and in this video, we'll be exploring a new and exciting plan to get us to space, and it has a lot to do with splitting the atoms. While it may seem far-fetched, getting to Mars isn't our problem. We've sent a lot of robots to the Red Planet in the last 20 years, and we've had a pretty decent understanding of how to reach Mars. We know the trajectory we have to leave on, we can calculate the time it would take, and we can say we're almost 100% certain of the sorts of problems we are likely to encounter on the trip. However, there is a tiny problem. With today's rockets, we don't actually aim at Mars and hope to get there. We travel on a trajectory trajectory around the Sun and understand that we will intercept Mars at a certain point. So it isn't the sort of regular one-way trip that can be decided at any time. Mars has to be at a certain place, the Earth has to be at a certain place, and the launch pad has to be at a certain place before the trip can commence. That sort of travel arrangement is great for robots, but it's terrible for humans. Because if we do eventually get to Mars this way, we would have to loiter about for a year before the stars or planets, in this case, align for us to come back home. This would stretch the return trip to about three years, which is an awfully long time. I mean, space and Mars are great and all, but are you really going to spend around four years of your life in space and on another planet, with no oxygen, proper gravity, or water? Really? No. I mean, you probably like space pictures and adventure as much as the other guy, but that is a price too high to pay for many people. To shorten the trip, we need a more powerful propelling system, and that's where the physics of nuclear power comes in. NASA, as expected, is already looking at how nuclear power can be harnessed for this trip, and they've come up with two distinct possibilities. The first is a nuclear electric propulsion system. These systems use propellants a lot better than chemical rockets. However, they provide a very low level of thrust. They use reactors to generate electricity that positively charges gas propellants like xenon or krypton, pushing the ions out through the thruster, which drives the spacecraft forward. Because they can use low thrust efficiency, these systems can accelerate spacecrafts for extended periods and can propel a Mars mission for a fraction of the propellant of high thrust systems. Interestingly, this tech is not novel. It has been used on the current spaceships taking rovers to Mars. Scientists have managed to use it to help robots such as NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance rovers on Mars, Cassini Saturn probe, and twin Voyager craft carry out their experiments. However, the tech hasn't been used to power the entire spaceship, and the current system would have to undergo a lot of changes before it could power the movement of a spaceship going to Mars. The second system is called nuclear thermal propulsion technology. This tech provides high thrust and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets, and it achieves this by transferring the heat from the reactors to a liquid propellant. The heat, in turn, turns the liquid into gas, which then expands through a nozzle to provide thrust and propel a spacecraft. According to experts, if nuclear thermal technology, for example, is feasible, it could potentially cut the time it takes to travel to Mars from six months to three months. We at Super Freaky Science reckon that people will be a lot more willing to go on a three-month trip to Mars than a six-month one. You should know that nuclear thermal propulsion has been on NASA's radar for more than 60 years, so the tank that the agency is trying to build on is certainly not new and as such won't take years to develop. 
show up. Now, before we continue, I've got an interesting wager for you. I'm going to tell you a super freaky fact, and if that fact blows your mind away, you have to like and subscribe to the channel. No questions asked. Deal? Great. Did you know that Mars has a thin atmosphere made of 95.9% carbon dioxide and 2.7% nitrogen? The atmosphere is so thin that it's not thick enough to trap the sun's heat, so it's very cold, ranging from negative 100 degrees Celsius in the winter to 20 degrees Celsius in the summer. Well, now you know. The important thing is that NASA has already taken steps to design working prototypes of these systems. For example, it has already asked for preliminary designs of these systems from different companies, and it plans to fund several efforts to look at different approaches to building them. NASA has already approved three preliminary designs for nuclear thermal propulsion systems. The newly announced contracts will be awarded through the Idaho National Laboratory INL, and DOE's chief site for nuclear energy research. Each contract is worth about $5 million, and these monies will subsidize about 12 months of research and development. After 12 months, a reactor design concept will be produced. Experts will now go through these different concepts and tell NASA which design to back and which one should be discarded as either too expensive or not feasible. The three companies that receive contracts are General Atomic Electromagnetic Systems of San Diego, which will partner with X-Energy LLC and Aerojet Rocketdyne, Virginia-based BWX Technology Inc., which will work with Lockheed Martin on the project, and Seattle-based Ultrasafe Nuclear Technologies, whose partners are Ultrasafe Nuclear Corporation, Blue Origin, General Electric Hitachi Nuclear Energy, General Electric Research, Framaton, and Materium. That's it for today, guys. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Goodbye, and remember to stay super. Forget about the science part, leave that to us. We'll do the freaky science for you.